Hi guys, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at what happens when we pass arrays to functions or methods in Java. So first let's just take a look at a simple example that involves passing an array to a method, performing some operation and returning a value. So here we have a method sum, uh, which takes as its form formal parameter an integer array data. Uh, it then adds together all of the items in data and returns the final sum of all of the items. Then in our main method up here, we have the integer array A, um, and we then call the sum method here, um, passing in A as the actual parameter, um, and then we store the returned result from our sum method in B. So here, data is the formal parameter of the sum method. And for this method call, A is the actual parameter. Now, if we go ahead and run the main method with this print statement here, you can see that we print out 190, which is the sum of 10, 70, 20, and 90. Uh, notice though, let's say I try to print out uh, result, or I try to print out data zero. I'm going to get this uh, red squiggly line here, and I'm going to get the error message, data cannot be resolved to a variable. Um, and the reason for this is that data and result only exist within the scope of this sum method. So we have our main method, and then within the scope of main, we have A, which references an array containing four values, like so, and we have B. So when this line of code is run, and the sum method is called from the main method. We have the sum method called with actual parameter A. And within the scope of this method call exists our formal parameter data, which refers to the same array as A. And we also have our variable result whose value changes throughout the run of the for loop, like so, until the loop terminates and result's final value, 190, is returned to the main method and stored in variable b. So once we've exited our sum method, everything uh, that is local to the method no longer exists and therefore data no longer refers to this array. So this relationship no longer exists. Um, and that's why when we tried to print out data or result up in our main method here, we got that error message. Now, there are a couple of really important points to be aware of when passing arrays to methods. Uh, and the first one is this. When passing an array to a method, if you modify the contents of the formal parameter, the contents of the actual parameter are also modified. So let's take a look at what this means um, using this reset method over here in Eclipse. Uh, so what this method does is it takes uh, the formal parameter integer array data and it sets each item in data to zero. Now, just a reminder that at present, if we go back to our um, array A here, A references an array containing these four values here. So at the moment, A references ten, an array uh, 10, 70, 20, 90. Uh, now, let's just get rid of um, our sum method here. And what we're going to do is we're going to call a reset method on our um, 
Array A. And I'm then just going to uh, use a loop uh, to print out um, each item in Array A after reset has been called on the array. Less than A dot length I plus plus. And we'll print out each item in A. So now if I go ahead and run this, we can see that each item in the array referenced by A has been reset to zero. So by modifying the contents of data, uh, we've also modified the contents of A uh, since they both refer to the same array. Uh, so in other words, by modifying the contents of a formal parameter, we've also modified the contents of our actual parameter A. So now the second important thing to note when uh, dealing with passing arrays to a method is if you re-reference the formal parameter, the actual parameter is not re-referenced. So let's uh, pop back over to Eclipse and uh, we'll take a look at what this means using our final method set to null. Um, so we have the set to null method here. Again, it just takes one formal parameter integer array data um, and it simply sets data to null. Um, so now let's go back up here to our main method and we're going to create a new array um, x uh, that contains three values, 10, 70, and 20. So this is what X looks like in arrow notation. It references an array containing these three values. So let's write a statement here to run the set to null method with X as the uh, actual parameter. So at the start of the set to null method, when it runs with X as the actual parameter, um, data from set to null will refer to the same array as x. But uh, let's now move um, this print statement down here and change it to print out the contents of x really quickly. So if we now print out the contents of x after running set to null with x as the actual parameter, let's go ahead and do that. And we can see here that the contents of x have remained unchanged. Uh, we've printed out 10, 70, 20. Uh, so what's happened here is that after the set to null method is called, Data has been set to null, so data, the formal parameter here, uh, or here. Um, and so this, the, and so data here no longer refers to this array. So this relationship no longer exists. Data has been set to null, uh, but X here remains unchanged. Um, so that's just an example of how if we re-reference re the formal parameter data in this case, uh, the actual parameter x is not re-referenced. All right, so that is all for this video on passing arrays to functions or methods. Um, I hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching. Bye.